All right, guys. Welcome to round number three of six. We got a sponsored player, Eddie St. Hilaire, playing Vegeta, of course. That's not even a question. I think if you had to guess anything that Eddie would ever play, would always include Vegeta. And then we got Rory Rhodes, new face, here at PPG, playing Pan. So we're going to see how this goes. Rory charging Vegeta and passing. So no one drop for Rory. Eddie here with a bodyguard Legic in the area, in the charge area. Critting himself with Vegeta going down to 7 already. So Eddie we just saw on stream not too long ago. We're going to go and have him play his signature Vegeta deck. Looking like a base red. He's going to play a manipulating god Champa here. After critting away a super combo from Rory's life. Rory's going to go ahead and draw one for turn. After getting critted for one. Alright, so we're going to have a quick rush trunks down for Corey. He's going to draw a card. Rory, sorry. <laughs> He's going to draw a card. 20k. Eddie's going to be like, ooh, a taste of my own medicine. Crit. He's going to go down to 6 here. And it looks like uh, he should be critting himself down to 5 soon. But he's going to think about it first. He's still thinking about an energy charge. Eddie with his signature. I'm the captain playmat. Very funny. Many take it the wrong way. But Eddie, one of the kindest souls in Dragon Ball Super. Just here to, to be funny. And he's going to go and drop himself down to 5 here on the Vegeta crit. And if he has a Kaba, he's going to have a good time. But no, he has a manipulating god Champa. Kaba would have been huge here. Eddie would have, made, would have been able to awaken and double strike his opponent. But instead playing a manipulating god Champa to search another Champa. Now we can see here a little bit of differences between Eddie's and Marcel's Vegeta deck. I feel like they always have like contrasting opinions on what is good. But they always settle on Vegeta. Just always, no matter what. Even if Vegeta's like strongly metagamed against I feel like they would still play it, which is great to me. I, I love it because these guys really have a passion for this leader. I don't have that type of passion for, for any leader in this game. I can really play anything. Um, So, Rory down to six here. And Eddie sitting at five. We'll see what Rory can do here. Pan, I don't, I'm not sure how the matchup is against Pan, like with Vegeta. Pan gets a lot of attrition out of summoning creatures and can also fight back while not losing too many advantages. So it should be a pretty decent matchup for Rory, but we'll see how this pan, uh, plays out or pans out. Haha, <laughs> get it? Puns. But we're going to have a fearless pan down for Rory. Not, will he, not only will he boost his creature, also just um, just drawing a card. And giving his cards double strike, so pretty good. Pretty good. Puns, all the puns. I love it. I get it from Punami. 
Panami? Panami. I think that's the joke I made. They love puns. I don't think any company loves puns as much as Konami. But, um... Eddie's gonna go in here with an Unbreakable Sun Spirit Goku, which I, I think is a great card, by the way. I think this card is obviously playable in any deck because it is just uh, a combo that takes one energy, one colorless energy, and draws you a card on combo. So I feel like it's just already very powerful. And it gives you 10k on top of that. So it kind of replaces itself just for the cost of an energy. It's like a cycle in Magic. So if you play Magic the, a Magic the Gathering, uh, it's much like Cycle, but it'll give you an added bonus here, which is combat power. So, with the energy that you're using as an investment, not only are you drawing a card, but you're also getting a 10k combo, which is fantastic. And another Manipulating God Champa down for Eddie. Loves that Champa. What I really love about these um, searchers that look at the top 7 is that they can chain on to each other a lot. Uh, many of the searchers, even the, the ones that look at top 3, um, can chain on to each other but those are much harder to chain on to each other like chompas are very easy to chain chain on to each other um because there's so many chompa names that you can play but chaining on to the one drop i think is like the best thing that you can do because not only does it increase your defense or potential power on board but it just gives you so much more like deck thinning and it gets you to where you need to be and eddie here at four life with a bunch of defense slash offense whatever he chooses to use it for but you can only imagine an aggressive deck like Vegeta will be using it on the offensive but he has it there on layaway for whenever he actually needs it he can actually access it pretty fast so that's going to be very it's going to be very important down the line as he starts getting a little bit more aggressive when Rory gets down below four uh, I can't imagine him using any combos to hit his opponent when they're above 6 life. Or at 6 life. Or actually above 4 life. I, I don't see him using any combos. But uh, I think that Fearless Pan has blockers. So I think uh, Rory might be throwing that Fearless Pan in the way. He's like, here, Fearless Pan, you, you've done your job. You can now go and block the Mighty Vegeta. And I think that's like one of the only cards that you want to negate slash block in Vegeta decks is, is the Vegeta itself. Now critability is not to be not to be underestimated. It looks like Rory might commit some combo power into making that pan survive, and he will. He will throw a Pride and Justice Topo. That's now two Topos down in Roar's deck, and he might regret that. And Topo's a very good card against Vegeta specifically because it is a negate, and negates against Vegeta, which is fantastic. It also has an upside of pressuring Eddie's battle cards. So if Eddie were to summon any Raging Attacker Vegetas, like he does have in his energy, then that Topo can really help alleviate some board stress, as well as providing a consistent threat it is a 5k combo as well, so you can always keep it up and use it as a combo after its negate. Alright, so... What is that? Was that a Mask Saiyan? I mean, a Mighty... Mighty Mask? The Mightiest of Masks. I believe that's what that was. He, he searched out a a baby trunks and a baby Goten. And whoa, Eddie here attacking when manipulating God Chapa. Um which is an upside. Eddie loves attacking with nuggets and attacking with this uh, fat little nugget in Champa. Got a little boost by his brethren. 15k to 15k and Rory's like that's the next level. I'll let that go. And that's really good for Eddie because he gets a crit pressure off board. And Eddie at 4. This is where Vegeta is the weakest. Just like in the anime. It starts off really, really strong at the beginning. And then eventually uh, dies down. So um, you'll be seeing Vegeta slow down from here. Eddie's going to have to try to accumulate some card advantage here. He does have one energy up. One blue energy specifically. So he does have... Um, representation of a sensu bean or a negate 
or any 10k that you might want to play. But Eddie's sitting there with, I want to say, over 8 cards in hand. He does have, uh, Rory does have a Gohan that he just played, 5k additional attack. He did draw a card off of it with Pan, and now you can only imagine that he's going to draw a card on the attack. Yep. And he's going to go ahead and do that, draw another card, net himself another card, and pressure Eddie's life with a 20k. And Eddie here, are you going to defend? Yep. And he's going to use Powers Combined Kabito Kai, which is an interesting choice over Boost Attack Piccolo. It is much cheaper in price, which eh, not relevant because you're talking dollars here. But it is unique in the way that it will not draw you a card if your opponent combos two cards. If Rory would have comboed two cards there, Eddie would have been in the position where he had to take it. Like even if he if he played that super combo, he would have put uh, a combo piece back into court Rory's hand. It would have taken away the power for that combo, but it would have just given Eddie the 10k. It wouldn't have drawn him a card because that super combo only draws a card if your opponent's combo area is empty. So, pretty unique in Eddie's choice of there. And what what it tells you is that Eddie has somewhat of a you know defensive side to his deck. He he doesn't want to completely lose to somebody just dumping their whole hand, which. There could be an argument against that, too. Because, uh, as a Vegeta deck, I mean, when you have the super combo, it usually draws you into a 5k. So that super combo essentially translates into 15k pump uh, with with the uh, Kabito Kai. You know, it can net you up to 20, but you don't get that extra card. And that extra card can be a super combo. That's the thing. That's the only thing. Like, you can combo super combo into a super combo. You see it all the time. But Eddie here with Mira from the Darkness... By the way, I want to say I'm going to hold this over his head like for as long as he lives. He said Mira was bad when I introduced it to him. I was like, look, bro, we're, we're going to play Vegeta. Vegeta's going to, you know, win the event, which it almost did. I think that was the event that, uh, that was the event that Chris Abella ended up winning. But he played Soul Striker Goku and he played against Vegeta in the finals, Anthony Hernandez. And it was a really solid pick for the event. But I think Mira was like one of the biggest cards in the deck. And uh, Eddie didn't choose to think so. And then we played that night. And then he was like, yeah, it's good. And then he like changed his mind like right before the event. Ended up doing terribly, of course. But, you know, just goes to show. I mean, like that that card, it, it had just came out. So that there wasn't like there wasn't like a track record for it. There wasn't like anything to really show that that card was just like, oh, man, you have to play it. It was kind of like play testing between the team and being like, yeah, this card's insane, you know. But, yeah, very powerful card. Mira is super, super good. Um, Hernandez split. What does that mean? Midget Proto Man. That was the one that Bella beat him, I, I think, like 2-0 or something. I think it was uh, the regional at Indianapolis. He's playing Vegeta. All right, we're going to see this mirror try to get in there. Rory at four. And Eddie at three. Rory's still thinking here. Long and hard. He's like, should I flip? The problem with these leaders like Pan, because they untap energy on the flip instead of draw two cards, it's actually significantly worse to be flipping on your opponent's turn. But sometimes, you just got it. But Rory here being like, ah, it really hates me. It really pains me to do this, but I'm going to have to flip the Pan. Pan's going to untap two energy. And Rory's going to be able to go. And oh no. It looks like he doesn't even do it. He just takes the two life. That is so crazy. That was pretty. Pretty darn interesting there. Yeah but Eddie's going to follow it up with the Kaba here. So thank god Rory did flip. But Eddie smells blood. And he's going to go for game. Because. Rory only has two life left, so Eddie's going to go combo, 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 combo. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 plus combo plus 15 of the base of the Kaba is 65. 
65k. Rory has about three cards in hand, I believe, with a, just one super combo in hand. So we'll see if Rory can do it. I think uh, maximum Rory has in hand right now is 45 if he adds in the leader attack. So that's 45 to 65, I think. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65. Yep, 65. Eddie's attacking with. Is there a reason for the Gotens uh, 313 Gamer YT? Yes, uh, it's very good for the Mass Saiyan. That's, that's the only way to fully resolve a Mass Saiyan. Yep, and Rory says, I don't got enough. After seeing his draws for the Super Combos, he did have two. Not strong enough to overcome Eddie's large combo power. But yeah, the Goten, uh, just another name that you can get. Why not play the other Goten? The other Goten's green. It costs one energy to combo with, and it does have the upside of destroying a battle card. Three or less. But the problem is, uh, in Eddie's deck, many of his, many of the blue cards in Vegeta usually, uh, the very little that you play are very important. Like Sensu Bean, the Super Combos... Uh, the Raging Attacker, Gohans, you don't want to use those for, for combos. That's like the, the one thing that you don't want to be using that for. So, I mean, not for combos, for uh, energy. You, you don't want to be using those cards for energy. You want to use cards like Sun Goten that will you'll never cast, ever. You know, you, you want to put that in energy. So essentially, Mighty Mass becomes, you have a secure, very effective energy for the next turn, and you get your power card in uh, Unyielding Spirit Trunks. Who won? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Eddie did win. So let me uh, adjust that. Eddie took game one with a combo of like 65 to 60. I think it was pretty close. 65k to 60k. All right. They're going to shuffle it up. Handshake before game two. I'm probably going to see Rory go first here. All right, so we're going to see what Rory has here. It looks like, did he choose to give, let Eddie go first? That's pretty odd. So pretty unique for uh, Rory to let Eddie go first here. We'll see if it pays off. The thing is with Vegeta, if you go first with Vegeta, you can still crit yourself, but you won't be able to attack. So it's kind of like throwing away a crit almost, which is maybe what Rory got out of this. He was like, well, if I let Vegeta go first, they can crit themselves and they won't be able to hit me that, that turn. So, maybe that's just better, you know? And Rory here being able to respond with one energy. Good move by Rory by not using his energy. And just saving it for a combo. Yep, so Rory here, enough to combo out of the double striking 
crit terror that is Vegeta. And getting his own Vegeta out of it. So he's got a double shot. Double shot summoning himself off the combo. So pretty good. We'll see if uh, Rory can follow up with anything or just maybe just pass. Sometimes it's just good to pass against Vegeta. Just hold the cards in hand. Yeah, Rory just deciding to say, oh, to go, uh, yeah, no, I, I passed my turn. I passed my turn, Sir Eddie. You can go ahead and do your worst, because I got some uh, I got some responses in my hand that I want to have the energy to play, so. Very smart by Rory. It looks like he does have some experience playing Vegeta. Alright, Eddie here choosing to crit himself and then comboing with everyone's favorite, Unbreakable Spirit, Son Goku. That's going to allow him to draw a card and cycle through his deck. And Roy's still sitting at 8. Yeah, Rory took it, going down to 7. That one he's like, okay, you can have, you know, which is good. I think Eddie, I don't know if it was right for Eddie to combo there, to be honest. Because <laughs> I feel like Rory's going to take it, like, snap take it, which he kind of did. Like, he didn't really think twice about it. He was just like, yeah, for sure. You committed a card. What else? All right, so Rory playing one of the new cards from Tournament of Power here. We have not seen yet on stream. This is Sister Attack, San Califla. So this one's pretty pretty powerful card. It's from uh, Terminator Power, like I said. Um, it does have the ability when you play this card, if your leader card is a red Saiyan, you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. If you do so, this card gains plus 5k and double strike. So it becomes a 20k double strike. It's kind of like a Kaba, essentially. But uh, it has that little... Um, no, it's it's, th it's three mana. That's the only problem. You know, three three energy is a, a lot in this day and age, believe it or not. But uh, I think Pen is going to help it out a little bit with another 5k. So it's a 25k double striker. And with Eddie being at five, I think that's just very, very good. Uh, uh, that's a very good spot for Rory to be in. I think that's a very good uh, card to play at this time. Because now it just puts like all types of pressure on Eddie. And taking this damage and it looks like eddie's thinking about just taking it because uh, even though you don't want to here you also don't want to commit too many cards that you don't have to uh to something like that so it, it's it's going to be a tough call but eddie's going to make it here uh sitting with those cards in hand he really doesn't want to get rid of too many cards here yeah it looks like he will combo here looks like he will combo out of this Time to no. Yeah, he's gonna attack here. Oh, okay. What he did is, uh, I guess he blocked the. Uh, I'm sorry. He, I think he blocked the. I mean, yeah, I think he blocked the leader attack. Okay, now he's attacking with the Khalifa, and he snap took that, so he went down too. Okay. I think he was thinking what we were thinking, and kind of just got ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> Khalifa took one, so you went to one, and then uh, Eddie went to three here. It's not, it's not the best, but at least Eddie's got a, at least he got a raging attacker go on here. I, I don't know if I was Rory, I, I probably, sh probably wouldn't have attacked with that uh, double shot Vegeta, because that just makes it an easy outlet for one, Eddie to just like awaken himself, and then two, uh, have the window of playing the Gohan. So sometimes. You got to know when to attack the, the Vegeta player, but if they're sitting there with an energy up, chances are if you haven't seen a raging attack of Vegeta, or Gohan, that they, they most likely have it in hand. And Eddie just going in here, he's just like, oh, I don't care if I'm at three life. I'm just going to go and create myself down to two. 
And play Manipulating God Champa, which is uh, pretty odd here. But he's going to get another Manipulating God Champa. He still has two energy up, so he can go into Sensu Bean, kind of further extend his plays. Or he can play a Satan Kaba, represent another two damage on board. Uh, there's a few things that he could do here. But that was a uh, pretty odd plays here. But Eddie's a professional here, not us. We gotta remember that. <laughs> Eddie finding a scheming Champa off his second manipulating god Champa. So it looks like he's only gonna have access to the blue energy. He might use it for the defense. I don't see Eddie being able to kill his opponent here. So I think he's just gonna go uh, defense, defense. Pass a turn here. He might even throw the Raging uh, Attacker Sun Gohan at one of the battle cards Rory has on board. Uh, Eddie did crit himself, so you could only imagine that Eddie's going to go after Rory's life with the Vegeta. But as far as anything else attacking, I'm not quite sure what he'd want to do here. Okay. So Eddie tapping out here to play a further destruction Champa on on the crit Jita. Pretty odd, but uh, Rory's gonna take it here. The only problem is that it, it puts Rory down to four, and that's exactly what he needs to be at to awaken. So, oh, a mirror from darkness. So, hmm. Maybe he comboed that much to. Well, all he had to combo was a Champa to get, I get, I guess, to like a fourth or fifth card for the Overrealm on Mira, and now he's gonna go in with a Mira, and kind of just force a an awaken here from Rory. Ooh, and a unyielding Spirit Trunks to untap an energy and use the energy for an Unbreakable Spirit on Gohan Goku, which. Hmm. <clears throat> It's pretty unique. I mean, that puts Rory down to three. I don't know. I, I think I would have just kept an energy up and then just passed the turn. But I don't know. Like I said, he, he can have a lot more extenders than I think in his hand. But if Rory takes this, he goes down to three, right? If Eddie attacks him again, puts him down to two, then he has to attack again, put him down to one, and attack him again, and get him down to zero and win the game this turn. I don't think it's possible for Eddie to win this turn. But I've been proven wrong, so we'll see what he does. If he does decide to go with that line of play. He does technically have enough power on board to do it. Because like he can attack with the manipulating god Champas, which he loves doing. And he can attack with the Gohan. I think he just wanted to bait out a an Awaken here. To make Rory untap that energy prematurely. And then uh, I think he knew that Rory had enough to block. And just baiting Rory into throwing some cards. And double super combo here, I believe, does it. That's 35. Nope, 35 to 35. So not even double super combo does it here. Rory's going to have to commit one more card. And then I think Eddie is safe to pass. The only thing I don't like about this play is that Eddie is tapped out. And he's at two life. So if Rory has... Uh, and Rory still has two battle cards on board. Yeah, those two battle cards for Rory are going to be able to pressure Eddie's life because he already has lethal on board, technically. Rory can play another threat, give it 5k, draw a card, and then just further extend his combos. I mean, he only has, like, what, four cards in hand? But it's going to be more if he if Eddie decides to give him more cards on this attack. Rory thinking. And he did choose to go in with the Raging Attacker's son, Gohan. That's 15k to 15k. Rory has to throw a 5. 
Rory is at four though, so if I'm Rory, I think I just take this. Because if Rory gets another card here from the attack, it's just more cards that he can use to kill Eddie next turn. Looks like he threw a Pride and Justice Topo. Whoa, Eddie attacking the Khalifla with a Manipulating God Champa. He has to trade up to 10. Uh, he has to trade up to 15 now. So he actually has to throw 10 minimum just to match Court, uh, Rory's um, Khalifla. Which seems like a lot. Yeah, we're playing a Pride and Justice Topo here, which is something that's going to punish Eddie for sure. Rory also gets that added benefit of drawing a card off the Topo, which is just fantastic. At Pan putting in a lot of work with that instant speed Topo. Which was kind of, I mean, it should have been something that Eddie was able to read by Eddie attacking and Rory throwing a topo as a 5k combo. You you got to ask questions there. You got to be like, "Wait, you have you have two energy. You have enough energy to play this topo. Why'd you combo with it, you know?" Which was seems really weird, but Rory using his topo to negate a 5k, have something on board to pressure Eddie and now Eddie's in a pretty bad position because that topo can literally take down both Champas with literally no opposition and then Eddie does still can get that Gohan pressured by that Topo as well and he'll have to commit at least a 10k if Rory decides to not put anything else into that Topo and go after the Gohan and you gotta assume here that Eddie's not gonna throw more cards in his hand to defend himself because he's gotta win next turn but Rory's at four so this one's gonna be hard Rory charging an impeccable implake impl impl yeah I think it's impeccable Attack Kaba, which is a brand new card from Tournament of Power as well. This card has a permanent that it could attack battle cards in active mode, and your opponent cannot activate counter against this card's attack. So very good uh, because it can go for game, especially against decks that are like, haha, I'm you know safe sitting behind this counter or this negate or whatever. Uh, and then when. When this card attacks your if your opponent if your leader card is red saying this card gains plus 5k to uh, for the duration of the turn so uh pretty good it's 20k three energy attacker that cannot be countered great for going for game when your opponent's at one yep and rory taking the play here pride and justice topo after a manipulating god champa you got to find it hard to believe that eddie's going to defend this But if he does, I mean, on the on the on the other side, if he does, uh, he essentially stops that Topo from doing anything else for the rest of the turn. So, I guess there's arguments for both. You want to see a U7 Frieza? Mm, I might be able to get a U7 Free, uh, Frieza on on stream. I think he lost one, so if he wins another one, he might be able to get on stream. I just don't want to put like an X2 round four on stream. I, I don't think that's something that you guys want to watch. But U7 Frieza, there is one in contention today. And he's a pretty skilled player, Justin Rios. Uh, top, I want to see top 10. Rory's going to continue the pressure here with his leader, draw a card, and go after Eddie, which is at two. This is the time to strike. Rory smells blood, and he's going to go after it. Comboed with a topo. Ooh, 
Uh, good thing is, uh, I think all of atta his attacks are lethal here because of the fearless ban. Alright, Rory's going to go with the topo after Eddie, and Eddie's going to be like, okay, super combo. I think Rory should have thrown a 5 there if he had a chance, or or instead of throwing the 5 with the fearless pan, he probably should have put, thrown the 5 with the topo. Okay, so topo takes down the Gohan here. Topo taking down the whole, Eddie's whole board, just one topo. Putting in the utmost of work. Alright, so two Sun Gotens out of Eddie's hand to stop the Fearless Pan attack. But. Eddie with only three cards in hand. I've never seen Eddie with so little cards in hand. Hmm. Oh, yeah, he comboed with the pan. I was like, why did it go to the drop area? Okay, we got Pratt and Justice Topo finally coming in here with the finishing strike. Rory's got to dump here because that's his stronger attacker on board. So I would I would just dump. Yeah, just dump. There's no negates. Just dump. Yep. Eddie scoops it up. And that was game two. That was an intense one, guys. That was very, very intense. Rory able to outmaneuver the Vegeta deck. Just drawing too many cards, too many, too many threats. That Topo, I think, was game-changing. For sure. Alright, so 1-1 one, one here. Going into... Game three of round three. Both players X1, I believe. So we'll see if Vegeta can take it once again on stream. Or if Pan can get its first win on stream today. Piloting uh, pretty unique cards. I mean, he has a lot of tournament, uh, Universe 7 tournament of power and ter uh, Universe 6 cards in his deck. Uh, he's playing the new Kaba. He's playing the new Khalifa. I didn't see a Kale. Uh, he is playing the new Vegeta as well. Uh, the one that like uh, gives another creature. Uh, like when you play it. Let me get the effect out of here really quick. I already have Tournament of Power pulled up here. Yeah, there we go. The Universe 7 Saiyan Prince Vegeta. When you play this card from your hand, if your leader card is red, choose up to one of your other same battle cards in play, which are Universe 7 or Universe 6, and switch to active mode. Both that card and this card gain plus 10k and triple strike for the duration of the turn. So that's a really powerful card. I really want to see Rory play it and uh, do some damage with it because that, that that's a very powerful card. That, I think the power level of that card is there's very high to not be seeing uh, a lot of competitive play. Uh, this is easily, you know, the, the SPR is a, a lot of money. I think the regular version is a decent amount, like 10 bucks. I think the four, let me see, one, two, three. I see the most expensive SR from this set, of course, for seeing hit, which I didn't actually see in Rory's deck. Oh, no, there it is. I did see it. I'm just not much good memory here. Um, but yeah, he is playing that for sure. He's playing the foreseeing hit. I think that card is just a, a mandatory staple in every red deck. 
Uh, I think the cheapest SR actually in the whole entire set is the Universe 7 Prince Vegeta. Which is uh, really odd because it's not a bad card. It's really not. Five energy is a decent amount, but that does not take away from the power and impact of that card. But uh, I want to see it here live, you know, for the first time, to be honest. I just really want it for sure. Alright, so Eddie's starting off here. He's going to go crit himself. Or he's going to go down to 6 already. He did it the first turn also. I think uh, that's what... Hey, maybe that was the secret. Just having Vegeta go first. Who knows? Rory here with the double shot Vegeta drawing a card. I think the super... I think the uh, the self-summon combos in, in the pan deck, I think are just uh, like the, in, the most insane cards. Because not only does it provide defense... Uh, I mean, they're essentially super combos almost. You're just paying an energy. I mean... No, they're not. They're not even super combos. They're they're something else. They're they're another level. <laughs> not even matched to super combos because you get a body, which is insane. Oh yeah, that's right. Pan did win last round. I still think of last round as like a win for Beerus. Like that that I saw as a win for Beerus one thousand percent. Like Beerus should have won that hands down. And I talked to him after the match. He was just getting way too ahead of himself. He was thinking about like turn after or whatever. And that's what happens sometimes when you combo. I mean, Eddie was in here to talk about it a little bit too. You just get too far ahead of yourself sometimes. And you're just like, you're just like, oh man, I just figured it out. I won. And then you do the wrong play. And you're like, damn, I mean, I was supposed to do that, you know, next turn or whatever the case is. But uh, I really saw that as a win for the Beerus player. So I'm chalking that up as a win. Sorry, guys. Quick rush trunks in. Very powerful card. Critting away Eddie's life here. He's going to take it. Go down to five. Good thing is, though, he's going to be able to wake it this turn. Right after he charges. He's going to be able to charge. Uh, crit himself. And then awaken. Which is going to be... Uh, uh, that's, that's really powerful, actually. All right, Eddie charging the scheming. Scheming champs. He's got two scheming champs in the energy, which is uh, arguably the best energy you can possibly have. And Eddie already critting himself here. So he's already down to four, and he's, it looks like he's going to flip and draw some cards. Not yet. Whoa. What is he doing? Oh, okay. Wait. Did he attack without flipping? Okay. So, it looks like Sun Goten out of the sideboard for Eddie. Because I know he's not main decking that card, but seems really good. Especially against his pan deck because you have so many threats. Like you have that that really uh, you have a lot of nuisances. You know you got the the Vegeta that summons itself. You got the Trunks with the crit. Um, Eddie's gonna play down a Saiyan Kaba here and just pass the turn. Really unique play. Hmm. I'm really trying to put my finger on it. I don't know. Maybe Eddie just messed up and he's just riding with it. Oh, he'll lose the crit when he flips. You're 100% right, Keyblade Master. I'm so not used to that ruling. So, good play by Eddie. Uh, because he did crit himself, right? And, and I'm only assuming he got that same Kaba from crit, or else he would have just played the Kaba, you know, um, hurt himself, and then uh, flipped his Vegeta, and then, like, attacked to draw a card. Um, the new ruling, or not new, I don't want to say, like, uh, the same time as the Mecha Arata, or I think a little bit before, actually, with the Bobbity Arata, a few months ago. Uh, if you do gain any abilities like Double Strike, Crit, or whatever, and you flip your leader, you'll lose all those abilities. But if you like Sensu Bean, for example, the the the, the Vegeta 
on the on one side and then you flip into the other side you'll still sustain that 5000 uh, bonus so that's the reason why Eddie didn't flip very good play by Eddie he did not mess play I was so I was so like what what's going on but I think Vegeta's like the only leader that really like the only significant leader that I think really gets hurt by that whole uh, restriction so that's why I was just so like totally out of it Oof, chain attack trunks is huge here that's gonna be able to kill that kava too which is like pfft, so powerful right now but i think eddie's gonna go ahead and uh protect it Yep, 10, 20, 25. Man. That's unfortunate for Eddie. That that play made him commit so many more cards than what he needed to. Oh yeah, and that Gohan gets summoned. Yeah, Rory's going to go after that Gohan. Gohan on Gohan action. But Rory's Gohan is going to draw him a card. Eddie thinking. It looks like he did combo to save his Gohan. Man, this is really this is a really tough matchup for Vegeta. Now that I think about it. Yeah, Pan just has too much advantage. Just drawing cards, drawing cards, drawing cards. And then it has the same powerful aggro cards that uh, Vegeta has access to and Vegeta plays. It just plays them with a little bit more oomph. So Eddie's going to go here and play his Mira from Darkness as an Overrealm. Uh, telling you that he is willing to combo uh, on a Vegeta swing or a Mira swing. Um, well, the Mira wouldn't be relevant because like he can attack with Vegeta first and then play the Mira after. But this just tells you that this just telegraphs to you a little bit that he wants to combo on the Vegeta uh, by playing the Mira first. So he doesn't want to overwhelm more cards. So it kind of tells you, it kind of tips you off to like Eddie having another overwhelm card in hand too. Or maybe just playing to another overwhelm card. Which is another thing that could be happening, but that Sun Goten uh, showing a lot of power here, taking down a Gohan with the combo. So uh, Eddie here, 20k to Pan's 15 or 10, sorry, and that's going to be a snap keep for Rory. Uh, Rory's going to go down a six now from seven, and Eddie sitting here at uh, three because he did crit. Eddie thinking about the mirror swing. Should that come first? Where should it go? Should it hit the trunks? Should it hit the pan? Pan is still at six. And Eddie has about seven cards in hand, I want to say. Eddie thinking about the sequence of attacks here. Does he attack with the Gohan first? Does he attack with the Mira first? He's going to go with the Gohan. Gohan's going to go after Trunks. So he's going to have to trade up. No, he trades up with a Sun Goten. No real other purpose in his deck. He's already got his blue energy. And that card does nothing but to combo right now for him. But, ah, uh, that's devastating. Another Vegeta for Rory. And that's going to draw him a card and protect his trunks. And that's exactly what Rory wants to see. And that's exactly what Eddie does not want to see. Man, 
man, this is pretty unfortunate here. I think the play for Eddie here is just to keep going after that Trunks. That Trunks is just going to take away everything that Eddie has going for him. And he, thinking about it, he's just like, well, I'm just going to attack you, I think. You'd hate to see effects like crit go to waste. And by critting a, by hitting a creature with a crit monster, like you're essentially just losing the crit. But he's gonna do it, and uh, that's gonna go away. The trunks is. All right, Rory taking his turn. Eddie, no long, no, not willing to uh, proceed with his turn. He could have attacked with the Saiyan Kaba. He would have put himself down to two. Very dangerous territory, as we saw as a lot, uh, from the last game. He does have two energy up, though, so he does represent Sensu Bean. He does represent possibly a negate out of the sideboard. And uh, he can resent, uh, represent some 10k combos like the Unbreakable Spirits, draw him a card. But Reliable Trunks down here for Rory. What? That is the first time I see that card on stream. Reliable Trunks. We're going to bring this up for you guys. It is not here in this top selling cards. Oh, high to low. There we go. Best selling. There we go. Uh, the best selling Reliable card on TCG Player. <laughs> Uh, this is a pretty interesting card because it does have Evolve for double red over a Trunks GT, which he's playing plenty of. It has Critical. Great. When you play the card, draw a card, then choose up to one of your red leader cards or battle cards. It gains plus 5k for the duration of the turn. So, wow. That card's pretty powerful. And uh, it's a 25k crit. Surprise, surprise, in Rory's deck. So, he draws two cards off the summon of it. And it's going to have crit too. And it can choose uh, any... Any red uh, leader card or battle card and give it 5k. So it can actually just like pick itself. So it could essentially be a 30k crit just for 4 energy. So uh, super powerful card. For the low low price of 19 cents on pro play games. Wow. Insane. That card's super cheap. All right, so as uh, as I expected, sense of being here on the defense. Man, Eddie in a really bad position here. He only has a few cards in hand, and he's he's defending himself here. And that's what you don't want to be doing when you're Vegeta. You hate defending in Vegeta. You got to use every single card, squeeze it to your advantage on the Eve offensive side. And this pan deck just. It's too much value. It's, it's just outvaluing. His cards are just like trading with Eddie's, but when you're like netting a card off of every card that you're committing, it's just like making the race that much more like like impossible. Man, Eddie's, <laughs> Eddie's got a huge task ahead of him here because uh, he's got to do a lot of things to protect himself. And like just, uh, just overcome the amount of pressure that there is on board. Because there's a lot of pressure.
man. And Rory's still at six life. Forcing hit. Man, that card's good. Look at your opponent's hand, select two cards, and they're gone to the warp. Until your opponent's next turn, I think. Let's pull it up here. Double strike auto when you play this card. From your hand, your opponent reveals their hand, choose up to two battle cards with 35k or less power from your hand, and send them to the warp. So only battle cards. At the end of your opponent's next turn, at the end of of your opponent's next turn. Return all cards sent to the warp with the skill to their hand. So that is insane. So if you have two of these in your hand, your opponent's not seeing those cards for another like two turns. It's it that is that's insane to me. I knew I selected two cards from your opponent's hand. I didn't know that they gave them back at the end of your opponent's next turn. That is ridiculous. Marcel coming in today just like crazy about that card too. Yeah, it's not looking very good for our hero. That's a powerful, powerful card. Man. Uh, Eddie and his Vegeta, man. Never give up. Never give up. So we'll see. Thing is, Rory still has a double striker on board. still has a double striker in, in, in uh, the f I think it's forcing forcing hit yeah still double striking 20k so that card's gonna show Eddie the business if Eddie goes down to two if Eddie goes down to two that hit is just gonna uh, annihilate his life so Eddie actually critting himself down to two here. Okay, so uh, this is, I think this is like the do or die turn for Eddie, honestly. I don't see him living past this turn. And the good thing is, at the end of this turn, he's going to get those two cards back. Uh, the bad thing is, he's still facing down a, a 
20k double striker, uh, uh, crit, a uh, crit trunks, uh, the pan that is still not awakened. Which I mean, if Eddie's gonna like somewhat go for game at all, you, you can't imagine that he can he could do that without like obviously putting Corey below four so that he can awaken. So uh, we'll see here exactly what uh, Rory can come up with. All right, guys. So it uh, looks like time is called for this match, and uh, it might just end up being a draw here. And he's gonna have to survive here because he is at two life. So they still have turns. We are using the uh, the uh, Bandai turn structure for non premier events, but uh, we might be having you know, we might be having a draw here. We'll see. This is Eddie's this is Eddie's turn, and uh, we'll see if. Uh, if Eddie can survive, you know, I think it's Eddie's turn. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3. It's going to go to um, Eddie first. Obviously, turn 0. And then you're going to go Rory, turn 1. And then Eddie, turn 2. And then Rory with the final turn on turn 3. So it looks like that uh, foreseeing hit is off board after that Vegeta. And uh, we'll see if... We'll see if Eddie can, like, uh, I mean, like, if you're in time, you definitely, like, want to go after the hit. You don't even care about your opponent's life anymore. Now you just want to stay alive to, to, to force a draw. If you're on Eddie's side. Like, that that's that's just how you have to play in, in time, you know, just by doing that. But uh, for Rory, he has to find a way to kill his opponent. I mean, like, he has Fearless Pan here, but he doesn't have any other battle cards to give uh, Double Strike on. But I think that gives the leader 20k also. So I think he should be fine. Just by giving the the leader double strike and and the fearless pan, I believe. I think that's what fearless pan does, right? It gives the leader and the battle. Yeah, yeah. So it it gives both. Uh, so both of them are lethal strikes. And Eddie, I could imagine, is not playing any negates main or side because he he's just not a fan of negates for some reason. Really wild. But we'll see if uh, Pan can actually get in there and actually kill. Eddie, because he's at two, but he does have that Raging Spirit and Gohan on board, which he can combo with, and he did get his two cards back from the from the hit, and he still does have like four or five cards in hand, so he's gonna go and combo with the uh, the obvious card on board, the Raging Attacker and Gohan. It won't get summoned because it was comboed from board, and it looks like Cor Rory's just gonna pass the turn, even though he has Lethal with a, a Fearless Pan. I don't know if that's I don't know I don't know if that's uh, the play. To be honest, unless I'm completely mistaken on Pan's ability and it doesn't give itself double strike, but I'm fairly certain it does. Uh, and that that would have just been game. It's just it, there's no reason to hold back the Pan. I don't think Eddie can put you down from six to zero in one turn. But 
I've seen it happen before, so I mean, uh, possibly not. But uh, Rory has what four cards in hand here? One, two, three, four. If Rory were to take like four life, that's another four cards. That's eight cards. I don't see him dying with eight cards in hand. You know, that's a that's already a good amount of cards that he can be playing. But uh, Eddie taking a moment to read the Fearless Pen. Read that it's a barrier blocker. Probably shed a couple tears. Um, I, I don't think that he can go for game here. I, I really, I really don't. I think he's just gonna have to go, uh, just make, yep, make a board, you know, have a blocker, have another 5k combo, stick with whatever cards he has in hand, not even attack with his leader. I mean, I would have attacked with the leader at least. But then again, if he attacks with the leader, he draws a card, that's the plus side. Um, you know, the, the cons are you put your opponent at five, and if your opponent has like a Saiyan combo or anything to uh, self inflict the damage, like that Khalifa that we were talking about. And we saw from Rory one of those games, then it, it might be really devastating. It just might be something that you just don't want to see because then uh, your opponent just like stretches their turn so much farther ahead. And we're going to see the Universe 7 Protector, I think his name is uh, Vegeta, or Universe 7 Striker or Fighter, uh, Vegeta, uh, from Tournament of Power, brand new card. And uh, this one's really cool because it does allow you to uh, pick another battle card, give a triple strike, plus 5k, I mean 10k, uh, as well as itself. The thing is, I think that might have been a little bit premature because I think he, he switches the cards to active mode. Let's see Vegeta really quick, if you can pull up Vegeta. I've dropped Vegeta, where's he at? Choose up to one other same battle card, which are Universe 7 or Universe 6. That's the catch right there. It has to be Universe 7 or Universe 6, and he doesn't have any on board. Yeah, saying. Uh, I think the pen is the same, though, so it's a, the restriction is, yeah. Yeah, so that's the only problem there. He did not have any other battle cards on board other than Fearless Pen, and that's not a Universe 6 or 7, so... I believe it does still give uh, plus 10k and triple strike to himself, though. So Rory's going to go here with the pan. And I don't know if I like that attack because if you're Eddie, I think you just take that because you're already facing lethal in the form of Vegeta. And Rory's not drawing a card off of his pan either. So there, there's not really much that he's gaining at all from this. Which is why I think it's odd. And he's going to combo also. Alright. Well, the good thing is that he still does have Fearless Pan on board. So he can like... He does technically still have lethal if the, the leader attack goes through. If the leader attack goes through, he can go Fearless Pan, kill him. And if that doesn't go through, then he can go uh, Universe 7 Vegeta and kill him. So, there's a few different avenues that he would go. But if it, were, if it was me... I think I would have gone with the Vegeta first because not only is it l your largest attacker, uh, but it already represents a lethal attack. And then go with the plan of like attacking with leader and attacking with fearless pan. So I think he might have messed up the uh, the sequencing of attacks here. Uh, just giving Eddie an extra card that he can combo with now. Like what if that was a 10k, you know? But whatever, the bodyguard logic is there to protect the life anyways. So um, the thing is, like even if he does have it, he's got to show it, you know? So... I'm um, not sure. I believe it might have just been a draw because uh, Rory was attacking with uh, with Fearless Pan and Eddie had a bunch of cards in hand to out combo. So uh, we're going to actually check it right now because they're going to go check the match slip. So that's perfect. We'll see right now what happened. I believe it was a draw. Yep, it was a draw. Yeah, Rory was not able to finish off Eddie even though he was at one life because of that bodyguard legend coming in super clutch so uh we're gonna go into the next round that was that was in time so we're gonna see the next round very shortly now thank you guys for tuning in watching pbg case tournament round four coming up next thank you guys again for watching we'll be right back